Now, throughout time, we have seen that Zelda Majora's Mask is quite a popular game in general, and also in the speedrunning community. But now, they have found a new little trick that's a bit weird, and is gonna change the speedrun in major ways. Yeah, debug menu. Uh, why is that a thing? Here we go! Ricky, <laughs> Ricky is very excited about debug menus, so yeah, now completely. he will tell you about the debug menu, so be ready for an introduction to the new glitch in Zelda Majora's Mask, the debug menu. What is it, Ricky? What is this new glitch? The new glitch is pretty screwed. <laughs> no, um, so the way it works, like I'm gonna start off with an uh, with, a, with an explanation first off, I think. So the way it works is the game still has the debug menu in, in it for whatever reason. It was actually patched out in the GameCube version. So what the new run is, is you do an entire setup in Deku Palace where you flip a couple of bits Actually, the game crashes, as I learned yesterday, if you don't get the setup right. And it's super complicated, and I don't understand why that's even a thing. Um, also, a couple of days ago, it was found that the inverted Song of Time, really just the inverted Song of Time, has a memory leak in it if you skip the cutscene. So technically, if you just play the inverted Song of Time a couple of times, and skip the cutscene all the time, you're eventually just gonna crash the game. And um, doing the setup, you can play, or you have to play, Song of Soaring 63 times, which is weird. And the, all this in combination flips the bits internally in the memory so that the debug menu value goes from zero to one. This entire uh, thing when you hit yes on the Song of Soaring location, you will bring up the bomber's notebook, but also execute the function which will flip the bit for the debug menu, and suddenly you can just select whatever you want, and suddenly you're pretty much done with the game. The entire game went from visiting all dungeons and completing all dungeons into go to Deku Palace done. So basically what the run turned into is you start the game, go through the little Deku phase in the beginning, make sure you can get out of Clock Town, then you go to the swamp, do the setup in order to get to the debug menu, and from there you can basically just click a bunch of things, get every item in the game and everything in the game, and you just get the stuff you need, like the remains and the, some bombs, and why not the fierce deity mask, and then you just go back to Clock Town and finish the game. I mean, you don't even need to go back to Clock Town. It's actually faster to just save the game, not by Song of Time, because the debug menu has a save option, and reset the console. So just basically a console reset from Deku Palace on, and then you're back in town. You go to the boy on the tower with the moon, kill him, and end of game? Yeah, it went down to 49 minutes. And it used to be 1 hour 15, right? Yeah, and that was super optimized. Like, there is a reason hardly anyone got close to that. And now it's not optimized at all. The Wii U controls are just complete garbage. That's also a thing. The Wii U is used now. Oh yeah, right. I forgot to explain that. So, the problem about this entire thing is... Originally, the debug menu required um, 2,816 Song of Soaring plays in order to even get executed. This is actually still used for the low percent run, which is the category which completes the game with the least amount of items possible. But people were messing around with it and eventually found a way to get it in 218. Song of Soaring plays, but that only worked on the Japanese 1.0 version, which is N64 only, but N64 crashes up on playing Song of Soaring six times. So people messed around with it a little more and found out a way to get it working on Japanese 1.1, which is on N64, Wii, and Wii U. So it's technically possible on Wii, but the Wii doesn't have a D-pad map to it. So you can't navigate in the debug menu, which doesn't really help you. You can increase your rupee count, and that's about it. So the only version this works on is the Wii U version now. It caused a little bit of controversy here and there. People were a bit, mm, is this cool, yes or no? Because in the end, like when you execute the glitch, you just get a sort of menu and you just select whatever you need. It's it's even pulled into consideration whether it's allowed in other categories, like 100%, for example. Yeah, because that category would just fall apart, wouldn't it? Yes. 
The only good thing is the controls are really bad on Wii U. Like, really bad. You hold forward and Link's like, nah, let me just go straight and wait a little bit because <laughs> why not? Because Nintendo has been bad at analog sticks before the Switch even. <laughs> way before. What is the debug menu even? Like, what is a debug menu for the people who don't know? And um, So the debug menu was originally tooled by the developers. Back then, shown in like beta videos and such, and uh, what was what could be traced back, it's really just a menu that people could pull up um, when working on a game, like when working on Majora's Mask. They would go into the menu, hit the L button, and then a big black box would appear where they could just set flags. Which songs do they want? Which masks do they want? How many items do they want? And all of those sort of things. It's a development tool. It was never intended to be in the game, like into the final release. So they just pushed the bit to enable it so far back that it would be inaccessible. Congratulations, you failed. And that's probably the reason why they also removed it in the GameCube version. It is beyond me why they put it back in in the Wii Virtual Console version. I mean, yes, the ROMs are identical, but technically the ROMs should be identical on the GameCube version as well, but they're not. That's really, really weird. For the people who don't know, the, the GameCube version is basically um, when you got, I think it was Mario Kart, the first 150 copies of Mario Kart Double Dash got a special promotional disc for The Legend of Zelda, which had some promos of certain games on it and Ocarina of Time completely and Majora's Mask completely and I think Zelda 1 and 2 completely as well all yes. on one GameCube disc and some um, and some uh, and like a trailer for a bunch of Zelda games <laughs> but aside from that we've now had a major development in Majora's Mask yes. with this debug menu and before that it was the Wind Waker for GameCube and then in between these two we had Twilight Princess which had a new development yep. so Base, and, and before that, before it's, all of that, we had Skyward Sword. And don't forget about infinite jumping in Breath of the Wild. The Zelda community, <laughs> the, the Zelda speedrunning community is on fire at this point. So, um, in short, everybody, Zelda Majora's Mask is officially broken. 